going up. And there it is. Okay. Okay, now we're going to Hello, friends. I should probably introduce myself because you're going to share it, but most people yeah. know me. My name is Asa. I have an above the knee amputation. Uh, it's called a translucent disability by some people because it's like not even an invisible disability, but not a visible disability. Uh, and I also have a chronic pain condition. This is uh, my friend JD. I'm JD. Uh, for those of you that know Asa, but not me, um, I have achondroplasia, which is the most common form of dwarfism, and it's a extremely visible disability. <laughs> um, True. And it also leads to a bunch of other complex. Yeah. Uh, That's a big thing that people systems. don't know about disabilities. Yeah. Is it's yeah, it's usually not just one, one thing. thing. You get like a percentage, <laughs> like uh, uh, people are like, there's always people. Especially in the amputee world, I don't know if it's the same way, but like people go, well, like, well, there's no, you can climb mountains. It's just like, no, no, I can't. It hurts a lot. <laughs> like, and that's like that's one of the interesting <laughs> things with dwarfism too. Is like even within a contemplation, there's like spectrum of severity. Yeah. And like I'm in the severely um, affected right. zone, whereas I know people that are in like the minorly yeah. affected zone. So. They like have the height um, issues, I guess is the word. Yeah. Um, but they don't have any of the other side effects that come with it, whereas I do. So then you, sometimes you meet one little person and they're like, oh yeah, I know this guy that could do this. And I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> when I'm in the same boat. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, yeah. And it's also like, I mean, it's so hard not to like compare struggles because that's like such a. I mean, every disability is different. Also, we don't speak for all disabled people, so if you're yes. watching this and don't assume that we're correct on anything, this is we're just, just speaking our for ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I had a thought that I wanted to ask JD about that I had just like two days ago um, that I had never had about my disability. I've been living with my disability for just like five years, six years. Um, so, but it was I was at uh, Winning recently, and Winning Coffee House, please sponsor me. <laughs> um, or just give me a free mate every once in a while. Free coffee house that yeah. we sponsor well at a different coffee house. <laughs> if they don't, then I'll claim that they don't care about disabled. No, that's not, that's, I'm not going to that. Um, but uh, oh, also Owen's filming, my brother. Owen, Hello. Right? So I'll tag him in this as well. Hi, Owen. Um, we're all, we also have more than one dimension. JD is a playwright. I'm a musician. Most of you know that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Look, look for our names on social medias. Um, social meds. Catch us on Twitter or whatever. Do you have a Twitter? I do have a Twitter. I never oh, use it though. Yeah, I, I'm it just kind of sits there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so this thought I had was, um, I was there and uh, an, another woman, uh, or excuse me, a woman came in and she had one. She was an above the knee amputee as well, but she didn't have a prosthetic. And recently, I've started rolling up my pants to show my my prosthetic limb off. Um, because I kind of had my ass handed to me by someone who was like, you're not really representing the disabled community. Um, but I didn't do it for a long time because I had an experience or two where people were like, was that song about when you had cancer or was that song about when you lost your light? And it's just like, dude, did you listen to the lyrics at all? It's like, it's very clearly a love song. Like, it was like a, a, a one for one admission of I didn't see you as a person all I could think about was your disability mm -hmm. and that was like so upsetting to me that I was like always pants on stage and then I realized how shitty that was and Soleil actually I was like no I'm not doing that and I was like fuck I'm doing that <laughs> so so I've started doing that now but then I realized um, when I was at winning that this uh, woman was there and she uh, I don't want to assume but she she was wearing dirty clothes and was uh, on the streets, homeless, and it felt like I was flexing. Like I was like, like I, I could, afford, yeah. I can afford this thing. I have health insurance. Mm -hmm. My, you know, my my daddy had a, had a good job at the time I got sick. So therefore, you know, I'm doing this. And like, I asked Owen about it, and he was like, "Well, you're not like flaunting it." I'm like, "I'm quite literally flaunting it." <laughs> she's, he's like, "Yeah, but you're not flaunting it in her face." I was like, "Yeah, no, I, I never would do that." But it was like. That's something I've never thought about. Do you have thoughts on that? Like, yeah, um, actually I do. Have you had a similar experience? Uh, actually, quite much so. Oh, cool. Because um, I've had a lot of spine issues yeah. over the course of years. Mm -hmm. Still currently go through that. Yeah. But um, Woo. Uh, a lot of those times that I've had, I have spine surgeries, and I had my first one done here in Albuquerque mm -hmm. um, by a doctor that 
didn't do it properly. And we... Albuquerque's never had the best specialists yeah. for that kind of thing. Yeah. And the people that do come usually end up leaving after a couple of years because they get better job offers. Yeah. Um, and so when you're looking for specialists, you usually have to look outside of the state. Right. And luckily for me, my parents have been in a financial situation with both insurance and just finances that we've been able to go and see these specialists. Yeah. But I know of plenty of other little people that are in really bad financial situations and then if they have issues then they're not near specialists they kind of have to deal with whoever they have and so I have felt the same thing you felt where um, I'm not so much flaunting it but it's just like oh yeah I had access to best care yeah they're like yeah I don't have that it's a it's a and, weird like it almost feels like flexing yeah and you feel guilty about it for yeah. Like being able to do what's best for you, yeah, sort of thing. Well, I've I've felt you know like it's it's a weird thing because it's like I'm I'm used to understanding privilege because I'm like a white dude like yeah I got if I put my pants if I put my thing down people ask me oh did you uh, uh, did you twist your ankle or something like that and I'm just like oh I can like walk amongst the the, <laughs> the non-disabled people in, in that way but it's like there's also a privilege within the disability community that is underprivileged. It's like, yeah. that's, that's a very strange, like, mm-hmm. I, and like, I don't know if I should feel, like, do you feel guilty because of it? Or do you feel like, I don't know. Should we be like, doing more art in, in, in order to give money to disabled services? Like, I think I should start doing that. <laughs> it's um, almost like intersectionality is important, guys. Yeah, yeah. it very much is. Is anybody watching this or asking us questions, by the no, way? No, there's people watching. No one's asked questions yet. Okay, cool. Um, um, oh, also, if you just leave a question, one of us will, and, like, after this is over, one of us will come in and, and speak our mind about it, so. Yeah. I have a topic for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, Tell them about wheelchair smiles. Oh, wheelchair man. smiles? Yeah. Oh, like that. Yeah. Like, mm. So I... The, yeah, that thing. Yeah. People uh-huh. tend to, like, just everyone stop doing this. <laughs> It's, Please. There's, there's this tendency, this like social norm of whenever you see someone who is disabled or, uh, it's, I'm, I, they call it the wheelchair smile because it's like it's probably more prevalent with wheelchair. But I've experienced it as well with this. It's just where people give you this weird, like dead-eyed, sad smile. It's like sad from up here, but it's like <laughs> it's just like this admission of like, hey, this world sucks for you, and I'm sorry. But it's also not like. I'm not gonna do anything about it, or vote, or you know, feel that bad after about ten seconds from now <laughs> about how the world screwed up. So it's this kind of, and it's just like, just look at me like a regular person. Like, it sucks that we still have to say that kind of thing, but like, yeah. Like, uh, it's just I've always felt that like my personality and who I am as person comes first, and then my yeah. disability comes yeah, second. Same. And when you do the wheelchair smile anything similar to that it feels like those roles are switched yeah and or you care more about the other thing than right about the one thing yeah um i also feel like i didn't mean to cut you off go ahead sorry. no go ahead i was gonna say i also feel like it doesn't come from a place of malice it comes from a place of care mm-hmm. for sure like they're like we appreciate oh shit, it, i don't think about disabled people it's like people panic mm-hmm. in that one second they're like oh fuck i mean i've never thought about this kind of thing before and mm-hmm. they like just that's just like a gut response that happens but I mean, you can talk to us. We're online. You can ask anybody. Can ask me questions too about like the pain condition that I'm in. I don't talk about my pain condition a lot just because it's kind of a bummer for everyone to be like, like, so how are you? I'm in agony constantly. You know? like, that's yeah. And like I saw a TED. It was sort of a TED talk. Like I don't think it was talk. officially yeah, yeah, yeah. a TED talk that was done by a, a woman who uh, has a plasia like me. And, she was talking about how um, when she's in public and uh, kids see her and they stare or like they right. make comments or they try to grab their parents' attention yeah. and the parent reacts by saying, oh, don't look, don't, don't do that. stare. Don't look, yeah. Um, or like, or uh, like they kind of like pull the child away mm-hmm. from her. That doesn't she help. She said, that, yeah, that doesn't help. She said, I know you're coming from a place of trying to be nice and yeah. trying to help me, but it's not helping. She says, what does help is say, well, why don't you go say hi to her? Or yeah. Why don't you introduce yourself? And yeah. She said, because in the end, what the kid is really 
doing is they're curious. Yeah. Because yes. they're noticing something that's different than the norm and they're trying to figure it out. And yes. when you react negatively, it causes them to associate the person, like, with associate the me experience. with a negative experience yeah. rather than being like, well, let me fulfill my curiosity. So then that way in the future, um, if when I come across this, yeah. I'm no longer curious about it. Yeah, yeah. Because I know. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's that's. Um, I, I, I when uh, I had my surgery when I had my amputation a couple years ago, it was like I had flashbacks of every amputee I'd ever seen or met or heard mm -hmm. about. Like you just have like, oh, I'm in this world now, which is a very strange thing. But like. Uh, I remember when I was like six, I was staring like like those little kid like in the, I was in that little kid's shoes. I was in that little kid's shoe. <laughs> two jokes. Um, I wear two shoes too, by the way. That's I only wear one sock though, which is really nice. Um, never have to look for a pair. Um, <laughs> also, if you want to knit me a sock and it's really a pain in the ass to get them to match, just knit me a sock. It'd be cool. <laughs> My friend Maggie did that for me recently. Um, but. Uh, so I was a six-year-old kid, and I was straight up staring at this guy who was a below the amputee in my hometown of Silver City. And I want to try to like find him again, but um, uh, he, I was just staring, like I was just like couldn't understand what was going on. I was just staring, staring like little kids do. And then he goes, "It doesn't hurt." <laughs> and then I like looked up at him. And then I remembered that entire situation 15 years later when I had my amputation, and it's just like it made me feel like, oh, I could lead a normal life. He didn't have, you know. He wasn't like locked away. He he was normal. Like we're all people, yeah. you know, like this kind of thing. Um, See, I was gonna ask you about that because I've never had that kind of experience. Cause I've had my disability since yeah, birth. since you were born. So I've I've always kind of wondered about that. About like if you, uh, like if your disability comes on later on in life, if you have that sort of reflective yeah experience. A hundred percent. Like you like. I, I had like full on flashbacks when it was just like, okay, this is the life you're entering. So you, you first you see all of your per, your first hand experience. Like that, that mm -hmm. thing was the first thing I thought of. Then the next thing is just like all of the pop culture references, and then you yeah. think of the people that you've actually met who are disabled or or amputees, and you're just like, that's a weird thing. And then <laughs> here's another thing: everyone stop sending me amputee stuff on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, if I see that cartoon with the little boy with the one-legged dog and he has one leg and it's like revealed at the end and everyone goes oh it's doing great like i hate that shit <laughs> i have more than one character trait <laughs> can i just go back to being the music guy oh, christ <laughs> um no it's it's i know it's all meaning well but it's just like i get one of those a week <laughs> it's just like surprisingly oh, good one. don't get a lot of that stuff i mostly make those jokes myself actually I, well yeah i mean think. <laughs> come on we've got yeah we <laughs> We're, I mean, we're we're creatives, so it's like, of course, we're gonna do the jokes. Yeah. Um, like uh, when that thing was cycling off around on Facebook when you were supposed to do like the three characters, that are you? Oh you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like the three movie characters that are supposed to be like be representative of you. I did uh, Gimli from The Lord of the Rings, uh, Dopey from Snow White, and oh man, I think it was an Oompa Loompa for the third one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. Uh, yeah. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. Um, uh, that's a great story, and I don't know how to segue from it. Uh, Owen, do you have any, what were talking about in that Facebook conversation? We're talking about the difference between yeah. a person with disabilities person with disability and a disabled versus person. Disabled person. Like the verbiage is very specific. Um, yeah. And once again, I just yeah, want to about that. reiterate that this is all our Plus, personal yeah. opinions. Um, Everyone's gonna be different. And really, the most important thing that I think you take away from this is just like ask the people yeah go talk to type. people <laughs> like rather than like pigeonhole, pigeonhole it as like one thing or the other or like decide like how you feel about it is how the person should feel about it rather just ask the person how they feel about it and what yeah. they want yeah. um, so anyway going back uh, there's those two terms of um, person with a disability versus disabled person yeah Personally, I typically prefer disabled person. Um, uh, and it's not necessarily that I don't like person with disability. It's just that I usually find that when people use that term, they do it in almost like condescending is not the right word, but 
Um, it's almost in the term of like, I know what the right term is to use or yeah. thing like, oh, it's not disabled person, it's person with a disability. Yeah. And like you're, um, and sorry if I'm offending anyone, but um, sometimes when- And also if you're disabled and watching this and you prefer a person with a disability, that's cool too. Yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, sometimes when people say that, it's just like, um, it's like, look at me knowing the correct terminology kind of and you should appreciate me for that right rather than like trying to figure out what i would prefer to be called yeah <laughs> pat yeah. me on the butt because i know one thing i know one thing yeah exactly it's, yeah it's yeah i was gonna say the same like i 100 percent agree with you it's it's like the times when i see a person with a disability it it tends to be like i don't want to i don't want to name political parties because everyone is guilty of it like regardless of political thing but the people who are like, why? Do, if we want to treat them equally, why do they need handicapped parking? Things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, they're just a person. Their disability is not. It's like, oh, I don't see through that filter. It's like, I don't believe in race and I don't believe in disability. Like we're all just people. It's like, that's very noble of you. However, I can't walk that far, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, or I need the space to get my wheelchair. Yes. I need, you know, like, also, there's a reason for those things to exist. Handicapped like, spots aren't just about being close to a building. That's also very true. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, for most of my life, I was able to walk, but then I uh, herniated a disc in my spine like two years ago, and since then I haven't been able to walk, so I've been in a wheelchair. And um, I get loaded in and out of the car through this lift system. I won't go into all the details, but basically the important thing to know is that we need um, an empty space next to us in order for it to work. Yeah. And so the biggest thing about handicapped spots is they have a stripe zone next to them so that no one could park next to you. So don't park in the stripe zone. Don't zones. park in the stripe zones. <laughs> and um, this goes out to some disabled people. If uh, and I'm not meaning to single oh, you out. I'm probably but also, I need to but also <laughs> if there's handicapped spots that don't have the stripe zone, try to take those ones before the ones with the stripe zone, because the stripe okay. zone is there Fuck. for a reason. I'm guilty of that. Uh -huh. shit. Damn it. Okay. No, I know you're right. We, we were guilty of it too before yeah. Yeah. we were in that situation. But now that we're in that situation, we're like, we where it's it. like, oh, yeah. okay, now we get it. Um, I just kind of like what you're saying. For earlier. me, it's like really hard for me to get out of the car, so I like having the stripe zone on my side because I can open the door all the way. Yeah, but I totally like, get that, and it's yeah, understandable. Yeah, yeah. So especially because the car I'm driving right now, like the doors are like, <laughs> it's like a hatchback door, so it's super long. But um, but yeah, I always assumed like the wheelchair ramp stuff like that um, needed that stripe zone. But like I I didn't think about like other disabled people who were maybe like just using a walker or, or like in my situation where they can't walk as far or they have like vertigo or like another invisible disability where that happens which also by the way no one looks disabled yes that's not a don't be like well, i don't know if this guy that guy's disabled if he has a handicap part it means there is like a strenuous file system where they keep proof that they are disabled like it's especially nowadays because um when you get a new handicapped plaque nowadays they print your picture on it yeah and so, like, if you look at the person and it matches the picture on the placard, most likely that person deserves a placard. Yeah. But if you look at the person and it's like a 20-year-old fit person and the picture on the placard is an 80-year-old woman, then you have then, permission. To then you have permission. <laughs> well, so, I would Asa, say, you... I actually have a really great line that I would encourage everyone to use, and, and it's if someone's parking in a parking space that doesn't have that and they don't have their license plate that's handicapped and they don't have their thing, the, the placard up, you can say, hey, you forgot to put your placard up, and I didn't want them to ticket you. Because if they are disabled, they go, thank you so much, I could have lost $250 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if they're just taking advantage of the handicapped spots and they're not disabled, they go, uh... Oh, that makes yeah, sense. It's my grandma, I, <laughs> she's in the store right now, and I'm just trying, they'll like fumble over their own words, and you mm -hmm. can just kind of, it's the high road way of of, it is of the yep. gotcha question so i highly recommend you, you just say that though, though about the picture asa your picture does oh, yeah. not look like you at all that's another thing that's that's fair. uh like <laughs> it's it's my license picture with it didn't look like me to begin with but it was a black and white picture that they they didn't they squished yeah, they the aspect it. ratio <laughs> i i don't look like me at all like it's very like they made me take my glasses yeah same off. thing with mine they, they made me take my glasses <laughs> off and, they squish um, it too. have you ever seen uh that picture um what was the guy's name from Psycho? 
Michael Wait, no, sorry. No, like that was from Halloween. Uh, oh, shit. Anyway, it's the guy who Norman Bates. Norman Bates from Psycho, and there's, like, a screenshot of him that was, like, a publicity still, where he's staring directly into the camera and smiling. That's what my that picture what looks like, like on Panic at Flagger. And so it's oh, super no. disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Get on that DMP. I think, actually, I got the new one, and it's not, it's, it's not color, but at least the aspect ratio is fixed. I just recently got one in, like, September, my, my replacement in September. Which, also thought it was funny that they gave me a temporary one, because I was like, well, it's not going to grow back, yo. Yeah, <laughs> like, no. they definitely. Well, that's another thing. When, when I had my amputation, it, I made a joke like that. I was like, it'll grow back, right? And the doctor was like, ha, ha, ha. Legally, I have to tell you that you know that it's not going to go back. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know. It was a joke, man. I hope it was exactly like that, dude. Like, it was 100% like straight that. Straight face. And then he said, and then he said uh, time to face reality. We've had people who didn't think it, it wasn't oh. going to grow back. And it's just like, I was like, wow. We're not lizards. Yeah. We're working on it. I want to be Dr. Connors. <laughs> Deep cut Spider-Man reference for all your fans out there. Um, uh, is there anything else we were talking about? Like, the difference oh. between a person with a disability and, like... I do have a little bit of input on that. Question. That's uh, in, like, psychology and, like, school psychology specifically. Uh, that's a concept where you cre create uh, person-first right. uh, vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And I get that. For and sure. I totally get that. That's kind of what yeah. I was saying before, is it's not so much the term itself. It's how you say it. Yep. That yeah. really yeah. matters. And it's, and it's like I was saying before too is like it just it has a tendency to to be followed by when people say that it just has a tendency like I you can call me that you didn't even call me that because like most of you watching this here I'm cool with because I'm sure they're good people um, but it just seems like a lot of the times they're like it's leading to or people think the word disabled is or handicapped is like a slur or anything like that yeah and that has a tendency to make it seem like we shouldn't try to help those people because they're they're normal or something like mm -hmm. that. It's it's just like I wish it's I could articulate to like that better. Demean. Yeah, it's like, like disabled's not a dirty word. Like it's like mm. a woman. Uh, God, this one time I was in an elevator and I was wearing shorts and it was very obvious I had like crutches at the time and um, she was just like I just I just want you to know that I I don't think it's weird. <laughs> First words out of mouth. First words out of mouth. And then I said I do. She's like, no, it's totally normal. I was like, well, it's, it's not normal, but it's not bad. Yeah. I think, And I think that's like equating normality with mm -hmm. correctness is... <laughs> I'm running for office now. <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's just this idea that because someone is disabled, it's it's a bad thing. It's a difficult thing. Oh, that's another thing that we were bitching about is... Um, yeah. You're when, good people. Or, You're or, so strong. Or, oh, you're so strong because of this. You're like, so if, like, brave. Or people would tell me, yeah, but I get, I bet it really gave you, like, a, a new perspective. Like, I bet you're, like, a lot stronger now. Like, you're a better person. Because, like, no, I'm a, I was a dirtbag. I had flaws. Like, I, you know, I, I had my shitty days and, like, I, I adjust my opinions and, and try to become a better person. I'm, I am a good person in spite of having a disability, not because of having a disability. Yeah. Like, the kind of weird heroism of, like, mm -hmm. that a lot of people tend to, like, place on... Ooh, and I have a good segue for this, but I want to hear what you think of that. No, I totally get that. Um, but once again, it's, like, one of those weird things where, like, since I had my disability my whole life, I've never, like... It's never, like, I've become stronger because right. of my disability. It's just that I am strong because of yeah. my disability. Mm -hmm. And, like, don't get me wrong. I appreciate people yeah. thinking that. And if anything, I appreciate the sentiment more. of it, especially <laughs> if you're like, if you genuinely feel it. Thank yeah. you. But at the same, at the same time, it's just like being disabled doesn't make me a better person. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And like, I know plenty of little people who are complete assholes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've talked to some disabled people who are dicks. It's almost like we're people. Yeah. What? Um. <laughs> and. I think also, like, kind of going off of that, that mindset that being disabled makes you a better person almost allows people to be worse people because of it. Yeah. Because I've definitely met some disabled people who have, like, this chip on their shoulder, and they believe that the world, like, owes them owes something, something because that's the way they've been brought up. Right. And so I think that's just as harmful as undermining someone's disability is glorifying it. Yes. 
Um, I'm going to, this is the after hours portion now. There's people who take it past glorifying and they start to sexualize it as well. Yeah. Which I'm sure you've, um, I'm, you've, you're active in the dating scene. I'm active in the dating scene. I've, I've had problems where I, you can't tell if someone's attracted to the strength that you have for dealing with mm -hmm. your pain, your disabilities, your word, whatever it is, or in spite of it, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And like, that's. I've struggled personally with that for a really long time because there are so like I'm very open, I'm very body positive, I perform a lot of times without clothes on to try to make myself more comfortable with it. But a lot of people, um, especially older men for some reason, tend to like contact me and like are really into it in like a weird sexual way. And it's just like I've had relationships where I was like, is this person sexualizing my disability? And like, mm -hmm. that's a weird thing that no one talks about. Yeah. Like, but it's like we're adults. We have sex. We're we're people who are involved in the dating scene. Like, it is a thing that we're ha we have to deal with. But like, we also don't want to be like, don't be attracted to my disability because it's like, no. If you like me, then cool. Like, I'm, I'm into that too. Like, yeah. How do you I, how do you run that wire or, or how do you straddle that line? I haven't been uh in direct contact with that on that side of like yeah um able-bodied people be like fetishizing you simply because of hmm? fetishizing you yeah fetishizing me um i haven't been on that side of it but an interesting experience i come across is there's a lot of little people who only want to date other little people and they find out that like i'm a little person who's single and they're just like, oh, oh hey. we should be in a relationship. I was like, I don't even know you. Yeah. We've had like two conversations. Yeah. You don't know me. And no. so then we'll like start talking and then it'll be like really clear. Like, I don't want to date this person. But then they're like, but, but like we're both little people. I'm like, that's yeah, what? a small so? thing though. <laughs> Look at how so much we have in common. Yeah. <laughs> Are you being ableist against yourself right now? This is very yeah. weird. Um. Yeah, just because we and, both went through the same thing doesn't mean yeah, we, no. we're the same person. Um, I mean, I get wanting that, and um, I'm not trying to insult anybody that does want that. And, yeah. and if you are it's a cool just person more that like, to be disabled and wants to hang out with us, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just more like um, you should get to know the person as a person, and then like the fact that we're both, we both have the same disability is a plus. Right. Not like the sole reason, right? It's like or like the main reason. Yeah, it's like if you both have the same favorite band, like yeah, cool. We'll have a lot of similar experiences that will be very touching, mm -hmm. but you could not, and I could not, and it wouldn't be like a deal breaker for sure. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of that before in the like, yeah, little, little person community. Like, that's it's really interesting. So um, wow, weird. I've had like probably three. Yeah. Before weird experiences like that, yeah, of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm about the same. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Well, is there anything else we need? To, we'll probably do another installment of this at one probably. time. Probably. Yeah, because um, I like hanging out with you, regardless like of whether we film yeah. or not. So no, no, like, no. We were um, we were just talking about plays and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Would you, if you were at a punk show, would you like to see a play <laughs> when the other bands are setting up? That's just an idea we were talking about, but we thought it would be cool. Anyways. Also. Available playwright if anyone. Yeah, JD's. A, it's interesting that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. um I'm a musician. If you need music for things, yeah. I'm for These are the plugs, guys. I music and I play multiple instruments. Um, Asa Martin. Follow me on JD Otsuka. Otsuka, yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought I pronounced it right. Otsuka. Is, Otsuka. Yeah. Cool. O T S U K A. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does anyone watching have questions? I don't, think, I don't know if anybody... It's a weird time. Everybody's yeah. like going to dinner or something. Don't but be if nervous. You see it later, if, you, if, you, yeah. if you see it um, later, just ask what... No matter how brash or weird it is, because mm -hmm. it's better that you be the little kid that's curious, and then that way you're not like, oh, I shouldn't talk to these people. Yeah. And then, like and then I, one of us will answer it because he's tagged in it, so he'll get the... Um, Someone says the play at a punk show is excellent. Cool. Good. Cool. We'll work <laughs> on that. Okay. Um, but yeah, same thing. Like... I would much prefer you ask me a question that you're feeling awkward to ask, rather than you just like assume an answer. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that's more like, dangerous. Like I was at a party in high school, um, and it was a graduation party, and one of my friends um, asked me 
And he started it out by saying, like, this is going to be a really awful question, but do you mind if I ask you? I was like, go for it. And they asked me a question. I won't say the question just because I don't know what our audience is. But, um, but so he asked me a question. And everybody at the party got kind of, not mad, but they were just like, I can't believe you asked that. I was like, no, it's totally fine. Yeah. And I just answered the question honestly. Yeah. And uh, we continued on. And it was fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, like I said, I would much rather you ask those questions, even if you feel they're awkward, rather than either assume the answer or look up and get a false answer. Right. Or get a correct um, answer, but an answer from someone who yes, is not someone the same who as you. doesn't yeah. understand yeah. necessarily. Um, yeah, yeah. Especially with like, um, especially when it comes to ways of like how to treat me, like, like yeah, I should, if you know what I mean, like, kind of like we were saying, yeah, earlier, yeah, yeah. Um, just like, do I help? What do I do? Yeah, mm-hmm. like if there's, yeah, just like don't assume that because you read something on the internet, that's how I want to handle the situation. Use your words like a big person. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so we to don't speak. Fight. <laughs> 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 also, oh, sorry. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> feel free to make. Um, once again, this is my personal opinion. Yeah, just, but also yeah. feel free to make those joke kinds of jokes towards me. Um, that doesn't mean that you should make those kind of jokes towards all little people, because there are little people who will get greatly offended. Very upset. But personally, me, if you know me, if you're comfortable with me, make those kind of jokes. If you don't know me. I might react differently. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't know that person yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd be surprised. I feel the same way, but I'd be surprised if anyone could tell me one that I hadn't heard already. Like, yeah. I, I bet you feel that way too, being like, mm-hmm. uh, this your whole life you've been disabled. So it's like, <laughs> you've heard them all. Like, I think Owen was the last one who told me one that I was just like, I had not heard that one. It was when he was talking about having an amputee party. Uh. <laughs> and like, that was, I was like, uh, like I've heard pulling arms. your leg. I've, uh, it's like you're not all right anymore because I've lost, lost my right leg. It's a uh, uh, yeah, like come on, step your game up, folk. <laughs> this is kind of related, but it's just a fun little story. Um, back when Hastings was still a thing, when mm-hmm. they were still open, it was a video yes, rental store. They a video is this thing for. No, I'm just <laughs> um, but uh, I was in line, and I was the only person there. Uh, there was like no one behind me, and so I got up to the cash register. I, paying for my thing. I was in a bad mood that day for mm. some reason. I can't remember why. And so anyways, I'm in line paying for my thing. And right next to the cash register is a magazine. And it was with Peter Dinklage, who is a little person actor. You yeah, don't know. Um, he had won like Sexiest Man of the Year or something like that. It was like a big deal. Um, but anyways, he was on the cover of the magazine. And so I'm paying for my thing. And at that time, I had a little bit of facial hair. Mm-hmm. And Peter Dinklage has a beard. Yeah, yeah. And so the cashier looks at the magazine, looks at me, then looks at the magazine again and just goes, has anyone told you you look like Peter Dinklage? And I look at the magazine at this chiseled man, no yeah. glasses, Who is full beard. Not the I have same like race a tough, Yeah, either. I have like <laughs> a tough of facial hair, and that's it. And I was just like, no. No one's no told, one's me, that. told me that. And she was just like, okay. Oh. And so then I paid and left. And, and it was an awkward experience for both of us. And yeah. so just because you know a little person doesn't, doesn't mean, mean we're the same person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we should close out with something that's like very important because like I think I have to get going soon. But um, I and we'll probably do another one of these. I just wanted to talk about representation. Because that is like that was mm-hmm. uh, I had talked to uh, JD a little earlier about why I started doing this, and then um, I, you know, like a lot of people don't understand why representation is important for like any sort of minority group, but um, for you know, usually the one people say is, uh, can you name five people who are famous and disabled who aren't famous for being disabled? Yeah, and that's and it's like Stephen Hawking, rest in peace, uh, Stevie Wonder. Steve Wonder, yeah. Um, Ray Charles. It's hard for I guess even Peter to Dinklage is kind Peter, of him. Peter Dinklage, I in guess. In that category? Yeah. Um, um, I mean, he gets particular roles because he's a little person, but... Well, the other thing is... At the same it, time, it's true. not be... Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is that in Hollywood, there's probably a lot more people who have invisible disabilities who just do not yeah. talk about them because mm-hmm. it's considered 
it's still considered by society as like a weak thing or a, a disadvantage, you know, where or like with your disability of chronic pain, yeah, it's much more common than you would think. Oh yeah, <laughs> I could. Yeah, but people don't talk about it. Don't talk, don't talk about it. But I think, I think it's important for us to like start doing that and then, you know, rep, rep ourselves, but also just like invest time in, in not only your disabled friends but disabled artists, disabled playwrights, disabled musicians, mm -hmm. like, um, yeah. Take care of each other. Be be more compassionate and kind. Do you have any closing words? Um, there's yeah, just oh, kind of what it. you said of being <laughs> kind and being compassionate and uh, like I've said a couple times, just always feel free to talk to us yeah, and don't assume. as a person first and yeah, yeah. figure it out from there. Cool. Okay. Is there a question? We do have a question. Sure, question. Um, it's from Andrea. I'm trying to oh, see the whole of it. It's it's kind of long. Um, uh, I don't know how to do it. I said, can you? Do you think you can? Figure I will it? try. Yes, see more. Whoop. It just doesn't oh, seem like it's no. Working. It's not opening. Um, can see question time. Guy, describing all yes. people. Say hi, camera guy. Describing people. All Hello. all people is always awkward. When if is it? Okay, to use a modifier. Oh, this is a dope question, and I wish, I really wish I could, like, answer it. <laughs> uh, Andrew's watching still. Andrew is watching still? Okay. I imagine maybe she could say the rest of the question, because we can't figure we out got, how to... What, what's the last word you're able to see? Uh, uh, describing pe all people is always awkward. When, if, is it okay to use a modifier refer... Referring to... Referring. Wait, wait, I have oh, a yeah, system. Oh, yeah, your phone, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. Put okay. it in cool. We have we'll multiple phones. Yourselves. Why don't we just do this? Um, you want to shout out your social medias? Hi, so, uh, so follow you? Facebook is really my main Facebook's your main thing. social media. Um, just my name, JD Oltzka. Okay. Um, He's a dope writer. Feel free to private message me yeah. first so I know who you are. Yeah, um, yeah. I should probably get my own like business page rather than just... My personal Facebook page. Um, don't honestly, because they they don't. Uh, Facebook is for for other reasons that I'll go to after this. Don't get, just use your personal one. Okay. Yeah. I'll just use my personal <laughs> one then. Yeah. So I have a professional Facebook page too, <laughs> and Facebook buries them with their algorithm. Mm -hmm. They're probably listening to me right now. <laughs> Fuck you, Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> He's making it so hard for people to be a, a musician or any, yeah. anybody in the creative industry. So if you want to get in contact with me, JD Facebook's the best way. O T S U K A. K -A. Yeah. Um. Thanks to Owen for filming this too, and uh, Sophie was actually here earlier, and uh, she she had some good questions lined up, but just she had to leave the comments, friends. <sighs> Are you just watching yourself right now? No, I, I don't oh. actually. Oh, have, you could do it too. Yeah, I yeah. could do it too. I don't know yeah. why. Here, well, He's gonna I'm gonna. Right <laughs> we're productive members of society who actually know what we're doing. No, we do not. It's not normal, um, but it's not bad. It should be a tattoo on some good person. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can't find your question. It might be. But this is odd. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, your comments are showing up, but not your question. Question time. Sorry about that. It's, it starts it's with question time. Like it, but Maybe if you had a comment. Um, I don't know. Here, go up to the thing where it says like comment. Or so was exciting. Andrew, was it Andrew that asked it? <laughs> it was Andrew. Yeah. Andrew, yeah. if you could just, just like ask it, it in the comments can or I something, see? we could see it because or just, we um, can't see it. Or just message JD now or message, yeah, or message now me. or me now, I guess, because that would show up um, as, a, as a notification that's from the Messenger app as opposed to the yep. Zuckerberg. I, I, I don't have the Facebook app downloaded, y'all. Yeah, that's, oh, that's what so. it is. Yeah, yeah you're... Uh, oh, wait, I'm getting comments, but not like... Yeah, yeah, but it's not there. Oh, damn. Wait, one new comment. Same. Nope. Oh, well. Better. Okay, <laughs> anyways. Oh, well. We'll try to answer your question we'll later. We'll answer your question in the comments oh. later. I think we should wrap this up, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks for everybody for tuning in. We'll probably do this again. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, just because we're going to hang out again, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whenever I'm in town. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye.